Hi, this is Tanmay and welcome to 10 Pixel Studio. This is my first demo video about my painting process. So without further ado, let's start it. The painting I'm going to demonstrate today is actually a fan art of the darkest TV series ever produced by Disney named Gargoyles. And the character I'm painting is Goliath. If you are a 90s kid like me who get goosebumps each time you listen to the theme song of one of your favorite animated series, then you guys are awesome. My big thumbs up for you guys. All my illustrations I usually start with probably one or two inch big rough thumbnail sketch on my sketchbook. Drawing on sketchbook also allows me and helps me to stay loose and rough. At the same time, it is super fast and quick, so I can experiment very easily. You can already see that I have brought the sketch into Photoshop. At this stage, I'm not worried about not me, lighting or perspective. I'm only focusing on composition and the overall scene. It doesn't matter for now if the sketch is rough or disproportionate. Things can be changed later during the process. The composition is actually based on a striking scene from the series itself. If you have already watched the show, then you may probably notice this scene. For colors, I'm using limited zone color palette. You can see my color swatches on my left side of the screen along with other references. The new color mixing in Photoshop is really amazing. You can mix colors in your Photoshop version the way you mix with traditional pigments. For example, in your Photoshop version, if you mix yellow and blue, you'll get a green. The same way, if you mix red and blue, you'll get a purple, which was never the case before with older Photoshop versions. I have made a video about it. If you are interested to watch it, then the link to the video is on the description. By the way, these red lines I have created are to find the rhythm for the composition. I keep them on separate layer. So throughout the painting process, I can keep referring them. Here is my reference sheet, which I use for this painting. I have also shot my photos in the similar pose of the character. Of course, I don't want you to be blind. So I pixelated those photos. Having a photo shoot from real life gives you some unexpected hints and clues about light and shape. My reference sheet includes screenshots from the series, color scheme, photos of bats, photos of sculptures, photo of moon, etc, whatever I needed. Also I have illustration of one of my favorite artists named Cynthia Shepard. Keeping the painting of your favorite artist next to yours while you are painting helps you to have a clear goal in terms of quality and standard. My lighting setup for the painting is fairly simple. Strong warm backlight from the moon and cool ambient light from the top. Sarah Cueso asked me on the Instagram that how to make an object or a light source glowing in the painting. By the way, my apologies, Sarah, if I couldn't pronounce your name correctly. I don't speak Spanish. If you want to have an object which is glowing in your painting, the easier way to do is to surround it with darks. For example, in this painting, the moon is fairly lit and warm against the cold and dark background. You can see the same thing I did here with my crucified zombie painting. Having a fresh eye for the painting is very important. That's why I always flip and rotate my canvas all the time. Here's a trick I really like to do. I put my painting on top of Magic the Gathering template. This allows me to see bigger shapes and the whole big picture of the painting. Just to be clear, I'm not an official magic artist, but I really want to work for Wizard of the Coast. Hopefully someday I'll get enough skills and I'll be doing real magic cards. All those information and findings I got by working on top of the magic template in smaller size. Now I'm transferring them into the final piece. To some extent, painting is all about finding a problem and solving it. Then you find a new problem and solve it and then you move on to the next. I try to make a 3D simulation in my head about lighting and depth. For this, having the perspective grid set up in earlier stage of the painting comes really handy. By regular practice and studies, you gain more experience and by experience, you get more efficiency. And when you become more comfortable with your subject matter, your painting process, then you go into autopilot mode and the painting becomes much easier. You can notice that I do not necessarily work on a specific area. Working on a specific area till you finish it and then you move on to the next area and finish and then move on to the next. It's called window shading or area by area painting. But here you can see I do totally opposite. I jump from one area to another. By this, I don't become over obsessed with a specific area or part of the painting. I'm not saying one method is better than another one. Each painting has its own demand. To be honest, whatever method or techniques I'm sharing are not absolute. 
I keep changing my process and techniques. Do I paint this way for all my illustrations? Absolutely no. But there are some things which I really enjoy doing. I always try to keep them. And whenever I have tight deadline, I usually avoid experimenting with processes and technical stuffs. Ivan has asked some interesting questions. I would like to address question 1 and 4. The first question is, how do you stay motivated? Do you have any tip or advice for it? And fourth question is, how do you fight with art block? I think these two questions are related to each other and connected. I would like to address these questions with two different perspective. Think about it. If you believe in some higher power, then among so many people, you are the chosen one who has been blessed with the gift of art and creativity. Not everyone is blessed with this blessing. You get two choices, either you could turn it into a hobby or either you could make it a passion. And when it is a passion, then art block or lack of motivation won't be a problem for you. Of course, there are going to be ups and downs, but eventually you will get over it and you'll be back on track again. And if you do not believe in higher power, then there is no chosen one. If there is no chosen one, then you have equal amount of chances to come forward in the race. If you go to elementary school and see a bunch of kids who are drawing, if you check their drawings, I bet almost all of them are in same level. Now let's hop onto a time machine and let's go to the future. After 10 years, you will see one or two kid from the same batch is really good at art. It's not because he was born with this natural talent, but because when other kids were having their own time with other things, that kid was having fun with crayons and markers. The only talent a one can have is the passion, is the fun he feel when he or she does the art. Bobby Chu's audiobook, The Perfect Bait, is a bible for artists to stay motivated. If you have watched Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns, then there is this, this scene when Batman got defeated by a mutant leader. Then new Robin, the young Robin, saves the Batman and take him into the Batcave. Then we see Batman suddenly leaves the room and going somewhere without listening to anyone. And then the new young Robin asks Alfred, where is he going? Alfred replies, to find his strength. After that, we see Batman goes deep into the cave and he was doing soul searching. He was talking to a bat. Bat was a metaphor about his, his consciousness, his promise he made that he would never stop. So for really long, he gave up being Batman and he was Bruce Wayne again. And from Batman Beyond, we all know that in his head, he is not Bruce Wayne anymore. The Bruce Wayne died the day his parents were dead in that alley. Bruce Wayne was the mask and Batman was his real identity. He was retired, he gave up being Batman, he was old. So the point is, even Batman has to do soul searching. So we are just normal human, we are not as disciplined as him, right? I feel the same when I go back and listen to this audiobook again. As an artist, you are going to do a big favor on yourself. Just watch this audiobook. It's free on YouTube and I'm sure you'll be pumped up after it. <laughs> and also, please watch Batman The Dark Knight Returns Part 1 and 2 or read the original graphic novel by Frank Miller. And if you have read it already, then you guys are awesome. Big applause for you. Back to the painting. Now I'm working on the knee area. Needed to do some course correction here. Here is another trick I do quite often. What I do is I use smart blur and noise reduction filter to get rid of all details. In this simplified state, it becomes much easier to judge the value and color contrast. Also, it helps to find edge control. Now I'm refining the face and the ear. Ears are quite complicated in terms of shape. It is super easy to make a wobbly mess. With ears, I like to simplify it with three major shapes. Middle, outer top and the bottom. In the next video, I'll take this painting to the finish and will share some tricks and techniques which I use quite often. If you have any question related to art or this video and you think my two cents can be useful for you, then please feel free to ask. You can leave your feedback and questions here on the comments. You can also reach me through Insta and ArtStation. Links are in the description. I would like to thank you. Without your generous support and encouragement, making this video would have been impossible. So thanks for watching. See you on the next video.